Okay, so here's our chemical uh, reaction unbalanced. And now what we'll do is we'll balance it. And I have some simple rules that you can use. Uh, there are really no like set rules, like things you have to do. The actual final rule is just make sure everything balances. Uh, and we're using a technique that's called balancing by inspection, which means like uh, guess and check. That means you try it and you see if it balanced. Okay, and this is the technique people have used for years. I do it a little bit differently uh, because I think what I'm going to teach you is more efficient. If you learned a different way and you're happy with that, then stick with it. Okay, um, but for now, I'll show you how I like to do it. And the first rule that I have is find something that looks pretty complicated, that it has the most atoms and maybe the most different kinds of atoms. So this one's kind of hard. It's between magnesium hydroxide over on the right over here and the magnesium nitride. The H2O and the ammonia are pretty simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick magnesium nitride. The reason I'm picking that one just for this example in general is because there's more magnesiums in here than there are here. So I wanna start with the thing that has the most stuff in it. Um, and that's subjective. It, it turns out regardless of which you start with, you're gonna should get the same answer. Uh, the only difference is how hard it'll be to get to that answer. So I see there's three magnesiums here, so I'll start with this. So I started with the most complicated. The thing that I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna balance everything in that compound with substances on the opposite side. And you don't have to pick a reactant to do this. You could pick a product. So I picked a reactant, so that means I have to balance everything on the product side. So now I have three magnesiums, so I'm gonna drop a three in here. And then I have uh, two nitrogens, so I'm going to squeeze a two in here. I should have left more room like that, okay? So where does that leave me? Well, that means this is done, this is done, this element is done, or ion is done, and this one's done here. That means everything else has to be balanceable by what's left. So that's an important idea. Everything that's, uh, that's left is how you're gonna balance the reaction. Don't go back and mess around with the things you've already changed or added coefficients to. Because if you do that, then you're gonna to have to balance other things that are with it, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, but we're gonna balance, balance everything. And then um, let's do this. Uh, let's say um, I have over on the right-hand side, there's three magnesium, sorry, you can't see that, three magnesium hydroxides, which means there's six oxygens, right? And then I also have, so that's the, that's the oxygen, not zero. And then I have, what do I have over here? I have six, right, hydrogens, like this. And then I also, in my NH3, I have six hydrogens. So basically what I need is 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. Now the only thing left that's left to balance is the H2O. Uh, and I can put a six in front of here and you'll see that that balances. That'll give me 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. And that balances my equation. So it looks like it can be complicated, but most of the time that last step, there's only one way to do it. And so just start by counting all of the elements up on the right-hand side that aren't balanced. I didn't do the magnesium and the nitrogen because I just balanced those. And then look on the other side and see what you can change to balance the reaction. Uh, a couple of other things, pieces of advice. Start with the elements that appear only in one compound on each side. So again, looking at the magnesium nitride. Magnesium uh, is only in the magnesium nitride and it's only in the magnesium hydroxide on the product. That's what made that so easy to balance. And then look at the nitrogen, right? There's two nitrogens. There's only nitrogen and ammonia. Again, that made that easy to balance. The last thing, and that's not an exam, it's not part of 
this example is if you're going to balance the reaction, sometimes you'll have things like O2 or N2 or Fe or uh, let's say, um, I don't know, copper, right? Pure elements. Just leave them for last because you could make those any value you want. And so if you do your balancing correctly and you're left with that, it's really easy to balance the reaction. The last step becomes very easy. All right, so let's practice by balancing this reaction, um, looking at the compounds and sort of following along the same idea, right? I have both aluminum hydroxide and aluminum chloride that are candidates for balancing the reaction. Um, the elements aluminum and oxygen only appear in aluminum oxide and aluminum and chlorine in aluminum chloride only appear in the aluminum oxide in the hydrochloric acid. Either one of those are good candidates, but like I said earlier, this compound, the aluminum oxide, has two aluminums in it, and so that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to go like this. I often will underline this compound so I don't lose track of what I'm doing. And then I look at the aluminum chloride and I notice, okay, there's one here on the right and there's two on the left. So I'll need two of these. And then I have three oxygens and I only have one in the H2O, so I'll need three waters like that. Now, I've taken care of the aluminum and the oxygen and now I need to look to see what's left. So I'm going to say, well, I'm not going to look at the aluminum because I just balanced it. So I have six chlorines, actually six chlorides, really. And then I have three hydrogens, time, oh, sorry, six hydrogens, three times two, right? So six hydrogens like this. And then on the left, the only thing that's left to balance is the HCl. And you see how, again, right, the, you, the, the numbers match perfectly and so I need six HCLs and that'll give me the six hydrogens and the six chloride ions that I actually need. Okay, we're going to do one more example. This is going to introduce a new idea to us uh, of how we can use a single element to uh, that's left over at the end to balance our reactions. And even though it sounds like it's the simplest thing to do, it actually can have some difficulty associated with it. So we're going to do that in this example. So we have liquid propanol. Remember, prop is the prefix we use in organic chemistry for three carbons. Uh, so it has three carbons, right? Liquid propanol reacts the combustion reaction with oxygen gas to produce water vapor and carbon dioxide gas. So we'll start by writing our reactants. And we'll leave the states off. You can always add those later. As you write this, what you'll notice that you just did is you wrote hydrogen twice. And it's really common in organic chemistry to write the hydrogens associated with a functional group, like the alcohol functional groups. It's very common to include those with the functional group atom, like the oxygen or the nitrogen. So you'll see it twice in the formula. So you've got to make sure you take that into account when you're counting totals. Okay, so don't forget to add that last one. Another sticking point or falling down point for students is when they see the word oxygen gas, the words oxygen gas. What does that mean, right? Well, if you remember, some elements are diatomic and in the air when you're breathing, the oxygen is actually O2. So you have to take that into account in reading the question. Um, if it said oxygen atoms, gaseous oxygen atoms, then it would just be O. But in this case, since it doesn't say anything and it just says oxygen gas, this is O2. And the product of all combustion reactions of hydrocarbons and related compounds with carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen is always carbon dioxide and water vapor. So water is, of course, H2O, and then carbon dioxide is CO2 from the name. Now, what we need to do is we need to balance. So over on this side, I have my reactant, which is clearly the more complicated thing because it contains every element uh, in the reaction. 
and more of them. So I have three carbons and I have eight hydrogens. So I'm going to make a little note of that. It's eight H's because I've separated the seven and the one because of the functional group. So that means I'll need three CO2s. And that'll also mean I need four uh, waters. And so what I've done now is I've balanced everything except oxygen. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tally up the oxygens on the right-hand side. And you notice, just be, the reason I check these things off is that's not balanced yet. So we're going to have to balance that before we can consider the reaction balance. So I'm going to count up all the oxygens on the right side. So I have four here, and I have six here. And that gives me ten. So I haven't done the one oxygen on the other side. So what I actually need, okay, if I have 10 here, and then I have one here, I need to add something to that to make that balance. And the answer is you need nine. Here is uh, the problem where people will often stumble. Oxygen comes in pairs because it's O2. And now you need nine. So then the question is, what do you do? So people teach different ways to do this. I'm going to show you my favorite way. Um, I just do, do this. I say I need nine halves. Now, you really can't have nine halves oxygen atoms. You can't have half an oxygen atom, uh, oxygen molecule. But that would come out to be nine and a half times two. So this number here, when this kind of situation occurs, is always this number here. And then this number, right, is what I have there. So the thing is, when people balance reactions, they want whole number values to represent actually numbers of molecules. And since you can't have half a molecule, and even though the proportions are correct, uh, you need to get rid of that fraction. And so now all you do is you multiply everything by 2. So I'm going to take this whole reaction and multiply by 2. And that will get rid of that fraction. So I'll have 2C3H7OHs. I'll have 9 oxygen. And then that will be in a reaction with 8H2O and 6CO2s. And I just noticed that I drew this arrow up here. Uh, that's just a different style of reaction arrow. So we'll just do this to avoid confusion. Uh, that other reaction arrow is the one that you use in Chem 1B all the time. All right. So... That's my balanced reaction. At this point, I would probably advise students to go ahead and double check. So let's go ahead and do that. Right? Yeah, I have two times three, so I have six carbons. I have two times eight, so I have 16 hydrogens. And then I have uh, two oxygens plus I'm just going to say 2, plus 18, so that's 20 oxygens. And so that's what we need to have balanced out. Now, some of you may have learned this. I draw down the middle, I'll say C, H, and O, and that's a nice way to keep it organized. So when I do it like that, then what I do is I say, well, I have 2, right? I have... Uh, 16 and then the oxygens what I do is I just take the oxygens from each compound so I'll say there's two here there's 18 here that leaves me with 20 like that so that's what I need to make sure that balances so I'll start with the hydrogens on the right hand side I'm over here and I'll say well I have 16 hydrogens because it's 8 times 2 and then I have 8 oxygens uh, so that takes care of that compound I'll go to the other compound I have uh, six carbons. Oh, yeah, you know what? I actually had six carbons. I wasn't thinking. Six carbons. And then I have six carbons. So that balances. Then I have 12 oxygens. 
And those both add to 20, so the reaction is balanced. And then if you wanted to, then you could add the states in. So this is liquid. This is gas. This is uh, gas. Water vapor is the gas state, and carbon dioxide is the gas from combustion. So there you go. That's the balanced uh, reaction.